Ken Miller trusted Darian Durant with the offense, even though at times he struggled like a young guy does. And he and he took him to the Great Cup both years. Second and ten. Quick hitter. And it's caught by Hill. And close to a first down with a penalty flag in the Eskimo secondary. I thought the flag came out after the catch. Pass interference must have been a pick play. Looks like this is going to go against the Riders. Pass interference, Saskatchewan number 89. A 10-yard penalty for May, second down. So it is Getzlaff who threw the pick, and they'll work it back for second and 20. Well, Getzlaff tried to sell this, but he's going to come up here and just get in the way here of the defensive back covering on that in route. He, he tried to sell it by turning his back towards the middle of the field, towards the DB and into the middle of the field. And he'll be well short of the first down. It's very subtle when you're trying to run a rub. It's if it's a rub, it's legal. And that's what offenses call it. And if it's a pick, it's illegal. And that's what defenses like to call it. And Chris Getzlaff just didn't quite sell that one enough because that was first down. That was first down territory. Joaquin Bradley tries to cut across and you can see Getzlaff gets in his way. Now he tried when he turned into the inside like that to look back at Darren Durant. He was hoping that that was enough. The timing was off just a little bit. Brandon James awaits. Eddie Johnson. Better kick. Sends James all the way back inside his 20. But he's dangerous and breaks the first tackle. And then stumbles. Wes Keats makes sure he doesn't get any further. A 52-yard punt by Johnson. 15 on the return. Pure later tackling hunger across Canada. Check. Saskatchewan Edmonton with three total in Saskatchewan. That was what Greg Marshall talked about is to try to get more pressure on Ricky Ray. In that first half, the offense was moving for Edmonton because he had time in that pocket. Saskatchewan rated six. Edmonton eighth last year in that tally. Here's a Clifton quarter, and not much there on the right side. Blasted out by the Baron or the Minister of Defense, Baron Simpson. He's turned up his game. Done a little more blitz from Baron Simpson in the second half already. Came into this game with 888 career tackles. We mentioned led the league. Last year, his fourth time with 100 tackles plus. Missed the West semifinal with an ankle injury. He's back for the Great Cup. 13th man makes some noise, second and 10. Ray wants to go deep. And the pass falls incomplete. Fred Stamps, the intended target. And back to back two and outs here for the Eskimos in the third quarter. Uh, just on cue, as we mentioned it, Baron Simpson's going to come start here and he's going to come around on this blitz one more time. Get a little bit more pressure on Ricky Ray and this timing very close and high hit to the face. I believe it was Luke Mullender. It wasn't called. Great boot. That's over Jackson's head and he'd like to uh, roll into the end zone and it's going to be a. Uh, Single point and an eight point Edmonton lead. Duval, let's check back in with Sarah Orleski. Well, Chris, last year there was Fantu's flakes and they flew off the shelves, so there's no reason to think that this year should be any different. <laughs> this year it is Darian's Dario's, and they've also upped the ante and done all Dressler chips. And there's no reason to think that these aren't going to be a hot seller very quickly. When it comes to the riders, it's difficult to keep anything on the shelves. It's one of those <laughs> last, last year in 2010. The riders were third amongst all Canadian pro teams in terms of merchandising sales. They were only behind the Leafs and Montreal Canadiens. 
Ten million dollars apparently plus merchandise. Well, Durant downfield for Terrence Martin intercepted on the tip to Walden Brown. Second interception for the Eskimos and Brown has his hands on that one. Well, the play made on the outside, I believe, by Rod Williams, the corner, who was working with the receiver down the field, and Durant tried to just throw it up and 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 see if if his guy will win the jump ball here. Terrence Nunn cannot. There's the tip by Rod Williams and Weldon Brown, who keeps hustling, and that's for young players. That's what you do, you, even if the ball's not been thrown to your man. Hustle to the football. You never know. Good things can happen. Eskimos were minus 23 in the give take category last year, plus three today. There's a Darius Bowman bouncing off his contact. And look at that second effort at a first down. Finally dragged to the turf by Sean Lucas. Yeah, that's just all effort from a Darius Bowman. That's just that's just fun to watch. That's that's what football, we're in week one of the Canadian Football League season. This is what it's all about, giving that little bit extra on what is designed to be a quick hit and play with pressure coming now from Saskatchewan. Edmonton going to these quick hitters and watch the second effort from Adarius Bowman. That's nice. 13 for Bowman. And a first down Edmonton at the Rough Rider 32. Ray Rolls. Back inside, McCarty wrestled down by Sean Lucas. Another Edmonton first down. Calvin McCarty so effective as a receiver. 36 catches last year. He had 70 back in 2008. Well, the design of the play, perfect for the Edmonton Eskos. Matthew Bertrand is going to be the first one out. And then in behind him is going to be Calvin McCarty. So really two options here for Ricky Ray. There goes Matthew Bertrand. He's got to the flat. The linebacker takes him, Mike McCullough. Underneath, there's another option. Two backs out of the same end in the same area. Great play call. Six receivers out. First and ten. Down by the fives. Dance the catch. The safety, James Patrick, there. But it's another first down and a 16-yard pickup for Fred Stamps. And Fred Stamps go back in that huddle, and he's going to say to Ricky Ray, that's a perfect throw. And because it allowed Fred Stamps to absorb the contact from the safety, James Patrick. He comes down the middle. He knows he's going to get hit in that area, but see how he throws it right in tight so he can brace himself while catching the football. First and goal at the five. Brought down about the line of scrimmage. Lance Frazier, Sean Lucas there to make sure McCarty couldn't turn it up. On the defense of side of the ball, and you're on the goal line, the, the key in a running play is to somehow make that running back turn his shoulders this direction so that they're not going this direction. And Sean Lucas on that outside linebacker spot, he's going to step up. Now he's got to fight through an offensive line block, make Calvin McCarty turn his shoulder pads that way, and now he's bought some time for the rest of his teammates. is having a tough evening because he was in coverage on Jason Barnes on a first half touchdown and he's in coverage here now James Patrick gets a little narrow and he looks like he's almost bracketing the backside leaving Eubanks in that one on one the extra point they had led by 17 and now it's a 15 point lead after the riders have closed the gap Edmonton with 10 points off the turnovers in this game and a touchdown after that last interception tossed by Darian Durant well, Darius Bowman reads this nicely the riders are deciding to take James Patrick out of the middle and have him bracket on the field side. Now, when when a Bowman sees that, he knows he's not going to have safety help 
on John Eubanks. He's going to get inside position on Eubanks here. No James Patrick back there to help out because he's in a bra bracket to the field. And Bowman gets the one on one he wants. Ricky Ray, no problem. Lots of time to throw and lays it out there. Ricky Ray talked about this being a huge year personally. Hey, we got a lot more work. Let's go. A lot more work. He's got some big targets. If Adarius Bowman has left the drops, he's behind him. And he had that in Winnipeg, and he had that early in training camp in Edmonton. But if those are in his review mirror, he's got Adarius Bowman as a big target. And Jason Barnes at 6'3. Here comes Tristan Jackson. Up across the 25, Ricky Ray had 11 touchdown passes all of last year. He has three already in the season opener. Uh, it was the first time in his career that Ricky Ray had thrown more interceptions than touchdowns. And uh, you want to almost, you get that to two to one or three to one touchdowns to interceptions. So just something that was unheard of in his career to go the opposite way. And he called it a comeback here, and he's on the beginning of that comeback. The first step so far in three quarters of football. Rough Riders finished the first half strong. Here in the second half, two turnovers and a punt on their three possessions. Durant rolls. And throws complete. Catch is made. Jason Claremont's got his first catch of the new season. 3,000 yard seasons. He had just 27 catches last year and waited a long, long time for that first touchdown. In fact, Claremont had played 37 games as a Saskatchewan Rough Rider before finding the end zone and then did it in the West semifinal in double overtime to beat the BC Lions. TJ Hill on the tackle, sets up second and seven. Durant incomplete in and out of the hands of Chris Getzlaff, who might have been a yard short of the first down. What a game it was, that Western semifinal, double overtime, BC Lions, first touchdown as a rider, right there. Off to the West Final. Now in his 10th year in the CFL, the Regina native. Let him go, let him go, let him go! Eddie Johnson into the wind, and Brandon James off yes, the run yes. with his 38. Sean Lucas there to run up the damage on the return of 14. So a two touchdown lead and an extra point to boot. The margin for the Eskimos. Well, I know there's a full quarter to play, but this this is one of those series. And Greg Marshall talked about it in his pregame speech that, you know, there'll be plays. You don't know which play. There'll be series. You're not sure which series. you got to play hard on every one. But this is one of those series that his defense has to come up with a stop. Or this one slips out of hand in a hurry. Open man, far side. And that's Fisher who won the job in the fourth quarter last week when he caught a couple of long passes, including a 62-yard touchdown. Just short of the first down on the final play of the third quarter at the visiting Eskimos. 15-point lead. It's Well, there are the numbers through three quarters of play as the Eskimos outscore the Riders 8-0 in the third quarter. Yeah, I think that's the story in this game after three quarters is the Edmonton offense and all of a sudden they found some receivers to complement Fred Stamps. You think of Adarius Bowman who has 70, 72 yards in three quarters and over 100 yards for Jason Barnes. Two big targets, Chris, that uh, now can complement Fred Stamps and we haven't even mixed in any of the Canadians. So all of a sudden this offense rolling. Well, here's a team that was ranked seventh in points scored a year ago and uh, on pace to be the highest scoring team after week one. So it's a bit of a surprise, but uh, when Ricky Ray looks like the old Ricky Ray, maybe we shouldn't be terribly surprised. And the protection has been there for a, a revamped offensive line that is going through some injury issues coming out of training camp. This offensive line has given Ricky Ray time. And the questions remain for Saskatchewan on defense, which is who's going to be their dominant pass rusher. Gary Joseph checks in on this short-guarded situation. And he'll plunge ahead and uh, 
should have the first down. And I love the strategy here from Marcus Crandall and from Cavis Reed because we talked a little bit about this first round draft pick in Scott Mitchell who played 38 consecutive games at Rice over his four years. Now they wanted to work him in yes but they're bringing him in a lot in this game to play tight end to help out these two tackles in Greg White and Junis Costin. So it gives a little bit of a wider corner and makes it harder on the defensive end. Right back in, first down at the rough rider 48. And off to Porter, left side. Cuts back, and Barry Simpson will bring him down at the 42 yard line. Gain of close to seven. You know, the question for Saskatchewan on defense that they just mentioned is who's going to be their dominant pass rusher? Montez Murphy against Edmonton in the preseason was probably the best Saskatchewan defender. He's getting beat up a little bit up there, and that's Junius Costin, a rookie left tackle that pushes him off the ball and gets him on roller skates a little bit. No oh, Brent Hawkins now, one of these guys in Luke Mullinder, who's in his eighth season, or Montez Murphy, the former Eskimo, got to step it up. Second three, and uh, Porter's got first down. At the 36-yard line, Junius Costin started in the Calgary Stampeders camp, but with the injuries to Cliff Washburn, and Jeremy Parquet, he was acquired from Calgary. Offensive line coach Tim Princeton having to juggle that old line, but he still has some veterans in there with Patrick Cabongo, a new and improved Patrick Cabongo playing a guard and Aaron Fiaconi and Kyle Koch up front in the interior of that old line. At least they have experience there. First and 10, they keep it on the ground. Porter spins up. The first contact and then gets drilled. Ty Stewart on the stop. He's voted an all-star by the CFLPA. Patrick Cabongo at left guard here. Cavis Reed told him after this when he was hired that he needed Patrick Cabongo to get down under 325 pounds. Well, Cabongo did better than that. He got down and lost 76 pounds. That's one Weston dresser that he shedded. And he is in much better shape, quicker feet. Nebraska product playing left guard tonight. Second and six. Going down for Ray. And he wants oh. Adarius Bowman again. Got him. Touchdown. Or did he drop the football? Well, they're consulting. And now the officials will confirm it is. Well, let's take a look. Let's we may get a challenge on this. Greg Marshall has a challenge flag in his hand. And it's whether or not Adarius Bowman had control of the football before he went out of bounds. He looks like he has it. And it's tough to see it was stripped. Well, that's that's going to be overturned. Or what? Well, I, I just that this will be a better angle for us right here. He's got possession, so it's not a matter of whether it was incomplete. And I don't think he crossed the plane of the goal line with that football before it was stripped out of there. Challenge flags on the field. It looked like possession gain, so whether they're looking at whether it was complete or incomplete, or whether it was a catch and a fumble, but either way, the ruling on the field. challenging the ruling on the field of a touchdown. We'll review the play. The Lance ruling Fraser on the field, with the strip. Sorry, Chris, uh, it was touchdown, 